Okay, we are continuing on with invertebrate life cycles today. Uh, yesterday we did a quick introduction of invertebrates life cycles and we talked about the four stages that most invertebrates go through in their life. Today we are focused on, or for the rest of the week, we'll also be focused on just different types of insects and their life cycles. So today we are looking at butterfly and moth life cycles. So a really quick overview of just what the body of a butterfly is, so you can see the change from a caterpillar to a butterfly. So butterflies have six legs, they have three different body parts, a pair of antenna, compound eyes, and an exoskeleton. And remember that an exoskeleton is just having the skeleton on the outside of their body. So the inside, um, like for example, humans have the skeleton on the inside, and that's what helps us keep our form. Uh, but Insects have an exoskeleton, which is just having the skeleton outside their body, if that makes sense. Um, so the three parts of a butterfly body are the head, the thorax, the chest, and the abdomen. So the head is obviously at the top, and I'll draw that in yellow. Then we have the thorax here in the middle, which is the chest area. And then the abdomen here, which is the end. Okay, the four wings and the six legs of the butterfly are attached to the thorax. So here is one wing, here's the other wing, and these are called the four wings because they're at the front. Then we have the two back wings or hind wings, and you can't see the legs because they are underneath, but they're all attached to the thorax because the thorax contains the muscles that make the legs and wings move, okay? So nothing is attached to the abdomen, and the only thing that's on the head is actually the two antenna, and then obviously the eyes. And an interesting thing about butterflies is that their body is covered by tiny sensory hairs, and this just helps them kind of feel, feel the world around them. Um, because they don't have the same kind of senses that we would. So they can like feel things with these sensory hairs. Uh, they can feel sounds, they can feel, you know, plants, they can actually feel the world around them basically. So here's a little just up close look. At, this is a peacock butterfly. So you can see that they have the four wings. So the two ones at the front. And then the two ones at the back, okay? And they are symmetrical, which means that they are the same. So if you folded them over, they would be equal, okay? Here we have the abdomen at the back and the thorax. And remember, the thorax has the, um, the legs attached as well as the wings. We also have the antenna here, just at the head. Okay, and interestingly enough, another change that happens is that adult butterflies, they don't have jaws for chewing. They go, they get rid of their jaws. So caterpillars eat leaves, we know that, but butterflies actually drink nectar. So they have a long tongue, which actually rolls up. You can see it here, but it's kind of used like a straw in the flower, which sucks up nectar from inside the flowers. And that is called a proboscis. And what that, so yeah, they basically just use it as a straw to suck up nectar so they can eat their food. Okay, and just another really cool picture that I found. This is a butterfly wing, which is really close up. And so you can see that it's made of little scales, kind of like a reptile or a fish, uh, just to see that similarity. So they're really, really tiny and they overlap. Okay. But... Let's move past what the body is made up of and talk about the life cycle. So the life cycle of a butterfly, just like all most insects, it starts with an egg. Okay, And the egg is really tiny. You can see the tiny little egg here. So compared to the butterfly, they are super tiny. Now, female butterflies are particular about where they lay their eggs. And this is because baby caterpillars are very fussy eaters, okay? They won't eat just any leaf. They will only eat special leaves. So the female butterfly actually uses her feet to taste the leaves. 
and this is to make sure that it is something that the caterpillars will eat after they hatch from the eggs. So, because if they don't eat the leaves, then they won't have any food, and we know that if you don't eat food, then they'll, they'll die. So it's important that she gives them the best chance of life. So she lays her eggs on a leaf that, or in a leaf of a plant, where the caterpillars will actually eat the, the leaf, okay? So the second stage, basically, which takes only a few days, is when the eggs hatch into caterpillars. It's also called the larva stage. The caterpillars are very small, and they need to eat lots of leaves, so they grow very, very, very big, okay? And basically, an interesting fact as well is that a caterpillar's skin does not stretch, so each time it gets bigger, the caterpillar actually breaks out of its skin, revealing a new layer of skin underneath, kind of like how a snake sheds its skin, okay? So this is called molting, and they do this several times. So basically, every time that the caterpillar gets bigger, they grow new skin. So they get rid of their old skin, and they grow, they grow new skin. And just another little close-up of the caterpillar. So here you can see the beginning of kind of what happens to the butterfly. So the thorax is up top here and then the abdomen is down here. All right, and they have legs and those are what helps them stay on plants and leaves. And they have a mouth with a head for chewing because caterpillars chew leaves, they don't drink nectar. So now we are in, so after they have their caterpillar stage where they eat as much leaves as we can, think of the very hungry caterpillar, the caterpillar then, when it's fully grown, it attaches itself to something solid like a plant stem or a very sturdy leaf even, um, and the caterpillar loses its skin for the last time and becomes a chrysalis, which is another name uh, for the pupa stage, okay? And a chrysalis is the tough protective casing for the next part of the cycle. So you can see lots of different chrysalises just on your screen right now. Look at how many there are here. There's a lot there. Okay. So anything sturdy, they will attach themselves to. They wrap themselves up into the chrysalis. And there you go. So inside the chrysalis, an amazing transformation takes place and something kind of really gross that happens is that the caterpillar actually becomes liquid which is super gross um, and then um, after they are mushy uh, uh, the body of a butterfly starts to develop so inside the chrysalis is actually like liquid and mush and really kind of gross uh, but then we have a beautiful butterfly that emerges like this so after some time, the butterfly will emerge and it comes out of the chrysalis. Its wings are wet um, and a bit wrinkled because remember, the caterpillar turned into kind of like mushy liquid stuff. Uh, so the wings will be wet and wrinkled. So the butterfly needs to dry out and for the wings to stiffen and then it's ready to fly away. So that was the life cycle of a butterfly, and now we're going to talk about a silkworm moth. So a silkworm moth is an insect. It is large in size and white in color, okay? Um, and it is actually found in China, and an interesting fact is that the caterpillar of the silkworm moth makes a cocoon um, or chrysalis, which is during the pupa stage, and humans actually use their cocoon to make silk. So we can't make silk without a silkworm moth. So like all insects, it has six legs, a hard exoskeleton, it has two antenna, two compound eyes, and a body divided into three parts, the head, the lorax, and the abdomen. Um, you can actually see that it's really super fluffy and actually quite um, adorable which is weird. I don't normally think that moths are super adorable, but this one has captured my heart and maybe softened it a little 
two scary creatures like moths. Because Miss K doesn't even like butterflies that much. But this moth is kind of cute. I mean, look at his furry little body. It's kind of like a little bunny with wings almost. Or like weird spider with wings. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's cute. All right. So here are the parts of the silkworm moth. I mean, look at his little face. I know that's a drawing, but still cute. So from again, same thing. We have the wings at the front, which are called the floor wings. We have the wings at the back, which are called the hind wings. We have the legs. There are six here. The heads with the antenna, the thorax in the middle, and the abdomen. So this is going to be a very similar body part um, or, I guess, design for insects. So the life cycle of a silkworm moth. So stage one, the female silkworm lays about 200 to 500 eggs and they hatch into larvae from small black eggs, although these ones are white, okay? Um, but they, they're they super small. You can see there's the mom, and you can see just how small they are and how many there are. The eggs are laid on the leaves of the mulberry plant, which is the food that the caterpillars will eat once they hatch. So they love to eat mulberry plant leaves. Uh, you can see that they're really small in size. And really interesting, the female silkworm moth actually usually dies shortly after laying her eggs. So she lays her eggs, and then she's like, I've done my job, and that's it. Okay, stage two is when we have the caterpillar or larva stage. And about 14 days after the eggs have been laid, they hatch into caterpillars, and they eat continuously for 42 days. So they do nothing but eat for 42 days, except every three or to five days, they normally have a little nap, and their nap lasts between one and two days. So in their 42 days of eating, they, they have naps uh, for a couple days every few days. And while they are napping, they actually shed their skin as well. So just like the butterfly the, in the caterpillar, the skin doesn't stretch, so they need to shed their skin and grow new skin. So they do that while they're sleeping. So they're very productive in their, in their sleeping. Then we have the cocoon or chrysalis or pupa stage. And basically that is when the caterpillars stop eating. They're like, yeah, you know what? I'm full just like in the very hungry caterpillar. And they stop eating and then they prepare to spin the silk. And remember the silk is what is made of their cocoon. So they spin one single strand about 1,000 feet long for about a week, so three to eight days. And this is what forms the cocoon around them. And then inside they transform. And about three weeks later, the moth comes out. But you can see here, those are the cocoons that they make, and that's what we can actually take and use from silk. So how they, be, how they escape is that they make a hole in the cocoon and climb out. But interesting, these moths can't fly. The reason why is because the adult has smaller wings, and they have a fairly like fat, furry body. Um, so they can't actually fly. So they actually will just become an adult, and then they will lay eggs uh, shortly after, okay? So that is actually, you can see that they're kind of small at the start, so that's somebody's finger with a little moth on it. They do grow bigger than this. Um, there was a picture of someone actually holding it in their hand, and it was pretty big, okay? But here's the picture of the little hole, and then that's a picture of the silver moth. So if you want to know more, there are four videos for you to watch. It talks about the life cycle of a butterfly as well as the life cycle of a moth. Um, there's even an Uncle Jack song that I found about the changes that happen from the butterfly or from the caterpillar to the butterfly. So that's a good um, reminder for you if you would like to watch those. 
There are also some games. There's even one game that you can print. I believe it's a board game, kind of like the game of life. Um, so you can actually go through. You can play some of these games if you would like to do a little bit more practice. And then there are a few optional activities that you can do. There's a few uh, plate crafts. There's one edible, which means you can eat it. I think it's made from candy. Um, butterfly life cycle craft. There are some different learning activities for butterflies. And then there is a silkworm moth life cycle. It's called a sensory bin, but you can actually um, eat, eat it as well. I believe that the caterpillar is made of marshmallows. So remember that if you do any of the optional activities to please send a picture through or video so we can see. Same if you play some of the games, okay? Let me know if you liked the videos, if you do watch them. Otherwise, that's it for today. Uh, you don't have anything to submit, uh, but remember if you do the optional activities, please, I want to see it. Um, let me know if you thought they were kind of cool. Um, and then tomorrow we will be learning about a couple more insects. All right. So have fun and let me know, especially if you do the edible ones. I want to know, are they, are, did you eat them or did you just use candy to make them?